This is a pipe. This is insulin. That's a pipe. This is an insulin pipe? Hey everyone, welcome back to the Type Me Diabetes News and Lifestyle channel. Now, quick disclaimer, this is not a sponsored video and I'm not a doctor, so please, motorcycle, stop driving by while I'm doing videos. <laughs> so please contact your physician before making any medical decisions on this product. Now then, in the social media ethos, amongst diabetics, there is one gripe that I hear time and time again, and that is the fact that we hate having to poke ourselves in order to give ourselves medication. I mean, in reality, we are the pin cushions of humanity. Even with technological advances like CGMs and insulin pumps, it seems like we always find ourselves on the sharp end of a needle. And thus, there is a real need for an alternative therapeutic like inhaled insulin, or as I like to call it, puff the magic pancreas, or the hypo-pipo. I mean, you could take a euphoric unit, or even hop on a ride of the Diadubi school bus. Oh, oh, one more, one more. How about toking a bolus bong? I digress. Now, Afreza is not the first of its kind. Uh, as a matter of fact, back in 2006, the FDA quietly approved a fast-acting insulin that was inhaled by a company you might know called Pfizer. It was called Exubera, and it was withdrawn just one year later due to poor sales. They lost some money. But then in 2013, Dipreza by uh, Highland Pharmaceuticals was approved in Europe, but that was scrapped by 2018 due to lawsuits regarding chronic lung disease. That's never a good thing, and they lost some money. But though those other two medications floundered, Afreza somehow persisted. Now, Afreza was developed by Mankind, and it was not real Mankind, the company Mankind, and it submitted its first drug application with the FDA back in 2009. Now in 2014, it was actually approved for type 1 and type 2 diabetics. And then Sanofi joined the team and began manufacturing it. And all of the world's problems were answered for two years. In 2016, Sanofi announced it was dropping the product due to poor sales. They lost some money. Now I'd like to say that drug companies are not in it for profits. I'd, I'd love to say that they're really in it to help people and make people's lives better, but when they lose money, they kind of tend to lose interest, and that kind of shows a lot. If drug pricing is confusing to you, believe me, I was super confused before I did some research. Check out this video, it explains a lot. But Mankind survived. I know, that sounds epic, but that's the name of the company. Mankind really survived. In fact, they relaunched the same year Sanofi pulled out, and they plowed forward. As of last month, their stock is currently on the rise, and well, Money follows therapeutics. And so what does this mean for Afreza? What does it mean for us, the sultans of sweetness? Today I'm gonna to give you a quick rundown on how this type of insulin works. I'm gonna show you how to administer it uh, by using myself as a guinea pig. And then we're gonna go over honest thoughts, suggestions, and questions for you, the viewer. So without further ado, let's go over the facts in the prick. Now, according to the website, Afreza is an ultra rapid acting mealtime insulin that is breathed in through your lungs using an oral inhaler, this thing right here. It's not meant to replace your basal insulin, so those you'll still have to do. Now, once inhaled, Afreza passes quickly through the lungs and it enters your bloodstream in about a minute, allowing you to start to see your blood glucose levels drop. You'll see a noticeable change around 12 to 15 minutes, and then you have a peak effect in about 60 to 90 minutes, after which point the drug actually begins to be eliminated and you'll see that out of your system completely in about three hours. So Afreza is a two-part system that includes an inhaler and then different dose cartridges that contain a powder form of human insulin produced by recumbent DNA technology. And even though Afreza is not in a liquid form uh, like other insulins, it still needs to be refrigerated to keep it from degradation. So here's the storage instructions. If kept refrigerated, a Fresa will stay good at room temp for about 10 days out of its packaging. Unpackaged and unrefrigerated, it drops down to about three days. Now the inhalers, these things, they have about a 15 day shelf life, 
but you have to keep them in a dry and a clean place. So my advice is get a marker, feel free to write on these things, the dates, and that way your medication never goes past expiration. All right, dose directions. So before I take my first toke or hit or whatever you wanna call it, uh, I'm just gonna give you quick directions. So first of all, you need to remember the first time you took insulin. Remember when you met with your doctor and he guessed how much insulin you would need and then you went high and low for a couple months until you figured it out? Well, it's pretty much the same. The thing is, is you cannot take the same amount of inhaled insulin as you take for injected insulin for mealtime doses. It doesn't equate, or kind of doesn't equate. Let me explain. So when I got my Afrezza, which was a sample, the packaging on the inside or the instructions said that it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So essentially, if I take four units of insulin during a mealtime, I would take four units of Afrezza inhaled. But if you watch the Afrezza resource video, it says that you should take 1.5 Afrezza units for every one unit of injectable insulin. That doesn't sound the same. But to make things even more confusing, if you're a type 2 diabetic and you have insulin resistance, you may need to take even more depending on how your body reacts to insulin. So here's my suggestion. Go to the support page, that one, print out the resources like the doctor discussion guide and make an endo appointment. You'll have to take an FEV1, which is a lung test to make sure that you even qualify. Or you could just throw yourselves to the wolves like I did and just take it uh, blindly. That's never a good idea. I'll show you how that went in a bit. So it's been said that inhaled powder medication can cause coughing. Here's a pro tip. To reduce coughing, remove the cartridges of medication from the refrigerator about 10 minutes in advance to avoid inhaled cold powder getting through your lungs. I tried it and it definitely worked. So next, remove your medication from the packaging. Grab your hypo pipo, open it up, and place a cartridge inside. So there's really only one way to do it. You can't mess it up, or maybe you can if you're one of those square peg round hole kind of kids, but it's pretty easy. And then close it up. Keep it horizontal and be sure not to tip it so that the meds don't run out. Now they say if you tip the inhaler, the medications run out at the bottom. There's even a picture that shows it. I tested it, didn't experience it that way, but I'm sure it can happen if you're rough enough with it. Then you take a big deep breath, inhalation, Exhale, and then the next breath you take immediately should be your medication. Try to hold it in the lungs for a sec or two. If you've ever smoked bad things, you know that that works. I'm not saying I smoked bad things. He probably did. Another important point is that swallowed fractions of a Frezza, they're not absorbed in the GI tract. And so they're actually eliminated unchanged in your feces. And that's important if you have toddlers at home who like to get into things, might munch on your medication. You don't want them to have to go to the hospital for hypoglycemia. Then if you need more medication, pop another one in, take a puff, and you're good to go for your meal. So real quickly, here's my first experience. Right now, I got my sugar up. So <laughs> let's see how this goes. Um, I've never done this before. This is the first time I've ever used this thing. I just took it out of the package. First thing first is you have to get your little inhaler. The second thing is, is you grab one of these Afrezza packages. Um, they're like blister packs. So you get one of these. This is four units. Uh, you take this mouth guard off. Click it up. This is supposed to fit in here somehow. Yep, fits perfect. Goes in just like this. And then you're supposed to hold it steady, like don't tilt it forward or else I guess the medicine falls out or backwards. Um, so I'm just going to hold it like this. You're supposed to take a big breath in and a big breath out. And then upon exhalation completely, then you breathe in the medication. Um, this is, by the way, has been out of the refrigerator for 30 minutes. You're supposed to leave it out at least 10 minutes. Um, because that's supposed to help with you not coughing, so I don't know how that's going to go. <clears throat> it's a little itchy back there. I almost feel like I want to cough, um, but no, it's good. I don't know. So it is 
3.38 right now. Oh, by the way, I haven't eaten since noon, so it's 3.38 right now. Um, I haven't given myself any additional medications um, after eating, so I wanted to make sure that I hit a certain number, a certain high number, so that I could take this test and it not be affected by anything um, like exercise or food or anything like that. So. Uh, let's see how it goes. All right, so it's been 20 something, 20 plus minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and check. See that or not? There you go. 215. So it looks like it's working. It's definitely working, just not very fast. So we'll see how long it takes. All right, it's 4:38. It has been exactly one hour. Um, on the packaging, it says that it's got a Onset time of 12 to 15 minutes. I did notice that exactly at 12 minutes, um, I did start to see a decline. So it looks like it actually is working as it says on the packaging. Um, the peak time is one hour. So the last time we talked was 3.38. Right now it's 4.38. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a glucose check and see where we're at. 127. Damn, that's impressive. That's really good. So the hypo pipo looks like it works. Uh, throat feels good. Um, I didn't cough. I did feel one thing I did feel was a little bit of like pressure after I took the medication, almost like in my head or in my sinuses. I don't know if that's related or not, but I don't know. I feel good. I feel really good. And I'm glad that it worked as fast as it did one hour and it literally took my blood glucose from 276 I think to 127 that's really good it normally takes two if I'm doing because I'm on the pump right now um, I'm on the Omnipod and I use Novolog it normally takes two hours to three hours for injected insulin to work so this is a big improvement. So pretty non-climactic. Honestly, I thought it would be worse. Time for honest thoughts, suggestions, and questions in the squeeze. Thoughts. So I've been taking a Frezza for about a month now and I've got a few takeaways. My first dose was really scary. I was nervous, I didn't wanna go low. Uh, in fact, I didn't pre-bolus this at all. I waited until my glucose was way above the range that I had calculated, and then I took it. And the other thing is that I made sure that I didn't have any insulin on board using my insulin pump. I was completely at zero at the time. I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, the medication worked pretty much as promised. At about 15 minutes, I saw an arrow on my Dexcom start to shift. That was cool. Then around about an hour, I saw a sharp arrow down. That was scary, and then it all evened out. And that was exciting. So yeah, all in all, it worked like it's supposed to. Now here's the thing I noticed, and I think it's important to know. When you have an insulin pump, you have an option, depending on your pump, whether you can do a extended bolus. And that helps when you eat really heavy carb meals, like pizza or pasta, especially for me. When you take a Frezza for a meal like that, uh, you don't get those benefits. In other words, you'll see your glucose drop like it's supposed to, but a couple hours later, it starts to creep back up and you're like, oh man, it worked, but it didn't. So I get why it doesn't work. Um, I think extended boluses are great for that type of meal, um, but a Frezza just, just doesn't work so much for that. As far as storing the product, it's no different than uh, injected insulin. I just throw it in the fridge in my uh, little Tupperware and that's where it lives. All right, suggestions. I'm curious about the inhaler. Uh, they suggest that it should be replaced every two weeks. I kind of feel like maybe if you cleaned it or if there was some tools to clean it, that might help reduce some plastic waste. But on the other hand, if you're asking people who haven't changed their pricker needle in about 17 years to switch out an inhaler every two weeks, it may or may not happen. Um, cleaning may or may not happen. To, that, depends, that depends on your diabetic hygiene. That's a Totally different video. Also consider packaging. Uh, maybe you can provide us with a cool little bag that will help us keep the pipe or in inhaler clean and dry, as well as providing a place for our medication. I think selfishly, I just want a bag that I can write hypo-pipo on and show my friends. All right, questions. So 
What do you think about this product? Are you excited? Are you scared to try it like I was? If so, why? Do you think it will revolutionize diabetes therapeutics or diabetics therapeutics, however you're supposed to say that? Do you think you'll get pulled off the shelves and forgotten in about two years? Well, I hope this video was helpful. I'm Ben, I'm Type Me, and I'll see you next time.